Everyone wants to be shredded, but being shredded is not for everyone. Soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching. And today we're gonna to discuss what body fat is best for you and how do you find out? Broadly speaking, I think there are four considerations. One, what body fat is best for muscle gain and for actually maximizing your progress? Two, what's your preference as far as aesthetics go? Three, what's your preference for the lifestyle that comes with different amounts of body weight and body fat? And four, and finally, what body fat are you healthiest at? And what's your sort of risk tolerance for different health detriments? Let's go for number one first, because this is actually a myth that I kind of want to bust. There likely is no body fat that is worst or best for hypertrophy or for strength. In all likelihood, there's a pretty wide range at which you can bulk or lose weight and still optimize your hypertrophy and strength adaptations. In other words, whether you're currently 10%, 15%, 20%, or even 25 or 30%, as a man at least, you're in the clear. Now, there is definitely such a thing as being way too low or way too high. For example, for men that might be below about eight or 6% for most people and above about 30 to 40% for most men. And likewise for women, it might be around much below 15% and much above say, 45%, but within those ranges for hypertrophy and for strength development, you're gonna gain the same amount of muscle mass whether you're bulking from 10% body fat or from 25% body fat. The reason why bulking at super low body fats or super high body fats may not be ideal is relatively complicated and the reason why there's a wide range. But if you wanna see a video going through why there is such a thing as too low and too high, but it's a pretty wide range for hypertrophy and for strength, leave a comment down below and I'll touch on that. The body fat at which you bulk doesn't really matter for hypertrophy and for strength, right? You could be 10%, 20%, etc. So what does matter? Well, one thing that matters is your aesthetic preference. Different people prefer different looks. Most people want to be pretty lean and that's a good thing to keep in mind, right? If you want to be looking a certain way, there's a certain body fat percentage that's usually most conducive to that. If you want to have abs, usually for men, below 15%. If you want to have more vascularity, usually for men again, below 15 to 12%. There is definitely the component of, because there's no optimal body fat for gaining muscle or gaining strength, other considerations like the ones I'm about to list come into play more so, and one consideration is definitely your aesthetic preference. A second one that not many people consider, and I would argue is actually the most important one, is the lifestyle that comes with first getting to that body fat, and secondly, staying at that body fat. Let's assume most people want to get lean because most people want to be about 10% body fat as a man or about 20% as a woman. That is all very well and good. However, to get there, you will need to be losing weight for a pretty good amount of time. The sacrifices that come with losing that weight aren't necessarily fun and oftentimes aren't actually worth the trade-offs. So when you're losing weight, oftentimes, you'll have to restrict how well you can socialize, for example. You'll have to restrict what you eat when you go out to eat with friends or family. You'll have to maybe cut down on some hobbies like drinking with friends. There's a lot of sacrifices that come with getting down to a lean body fat percentage, for example. Equally, to get down to a lean body fat percentage, you may have to spend more time doing steps or even doing cardio. And that's an additional time commitment that for some people just won't be feasible or won't be preferable because they have other priorities like taking care of their children, like having a full-time job, like lifting weights. There are other things in life that may be more important to you than spending that extra time doing your steps, sacrificing social opportunities or time and other stuff. So for example, oftentimes when you're higher in body fat, you'll find that you can eat more food and that can be very enjoyable for some people and still stay the same weight. Whereas if you're leaner, you really have to watch what you're eating. You know, when you're lean, there's a few things that happen, especially the leaner you get. For example, if you get close to a bodybuilding show is that you generally grow more concerned with how you look. You generally have to watch what you're eating more. You generally give more thought to various aspects of your body and how it looks. So you get a bit more body dysmorphia and a variety of other things happen. It's worth considering that maybe actually, yes, you want to look diced and lean for summer, but actually you may be better off being 15% body fat instead of 10 because you don't have to make those sacrifices with regards to your hobbies, with regards to socializing, with regards to watching your food intake super closely. So that's a consideration. And likewise, with your aesthetic preference, it's not as though you have to be 10% to look good. In fact, for you, you might think that between about 10 and 20% body fat, you look pretty good. So the first two considerations were your lifestyle and your aesthetic preferences. The third one would be health considerations. Now, again, I'm gonna myth bust a little bit here. The healthiest body fat is likely not as low as you think. You don't need to be 10% body fat as a man or 20% 
body fat as a woman to optimize your health. In fact, for men, for example, the most recent analyses show that likely between about 10 or 12 and 25% body fat, you're in pretty good health. You don't need to get down to 10%. That's just a myth. There's a consideration of, okay, well, if you're about 30% body fat right now, would your health benefit from going down to say 25% or 20%? Right? Equally, if you're currently 8% body fat because you've been getting yucky, you feel me? You may need to gain some weight before you're fully healthy again. So that is a consideration, but much like the ideal body fat for bulking or for gaining strength or for gaining muscle. It is a bit of a myth where people think that you need to be between say 10 and 12% body fat for optimum health. In reality, the range is way larger and at either extreme, you will notice some health decrements, but as long as you're within that pretty broad, healthy range, you're doing pretty well. So in the end, to determine your optimal body fat percentage, you kind of need to take these considerations into account. You need to consider what's your aesthetic preference? What do you prefer to look like? What's your lifestyle preference? You know, with each body fat percentage, with each body weight for you, there'll come different lifestyle constraints. If you're trying to lose weight, you may need to move more, which takes time. You may have to cut down on socializing a little bit or just be more mindful of your eating. You may notice that as you get leaner, actually, for example, your body dysmorphia increases a little bit. That's why you see a lot of people at about 15% body fat or more as men rock it pretty well and be pretty happy with how they look. Whereas as they get leaner, they get more concerned with, oh, I don't have a full six pack. And a final consideration would be health. Now for health, again, you have a huge range, so you can keep that in mind. But as long as you're somewhere within that range, you probably won't see a big benefit of getting leaner or gaining some weight. So if you take those three together, you'll find out what ideal body fat is for you. I'm gonna take myself as an example, just to give you a brief idea of how to run through it. Personally, aesthetically, I'm pretty happy being between about eight and 20% body fat. Do I prefer how I look closer to 8%? Of course. However, this is where the other considerations come in. To get down to 8% body fat, I need to be relatively mindful of my eating and make sacrifices with regards to my hobbies. So for example, I like to cook, so that's a sacrifice. I like to go out for food with friends, that's another sacrifice. And finally, health-wise, that range works pretty well. So all things considered, for me, because I have aesthetic preferences that are pretty broad, but closer to about 10% body fat, I have lifestyle preferences that are also pretty broad, I don't mind a ton, but I do prefer having a bit more wiggle room. I can eat a bit more food, I don't need to be as mindful of my intake, because of my hobbies and my friends and socializing in general. I prefer to be about 15% as far as that goes. And then for health, I'm fine. Like as long as you're between eight and 20%, you're good. So for me, the range of about eight to 15% or so seems pretty good. And that's roughly where I tend to be. For you, this may look different. You may prefer being leaner because you wanna look good year round. Or you may prefer having a bit more wiggle room because when you move around, when you're heavier and the heavier body fat percentage, your body adapts burns more calories, and you can actually eat more food without gaining additional weight. So that's the video. Check out these three considerations. Keep in mind that you don't need to be a certain body fat to optimize muscle growth or strength adaptations, which I'll make a video on soon. If you wanna see that, leave a comment below. Finally, if you liked the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in that next one. Peace. It is hot as in here. It's like 29 degrees. Bit of a frontal bicep. Solid. I am sweating my ass off. This is crazy.